Kathy Sweetser from San Diego State University and today I'm going to show you how you can take a survey that you have done in Qualtrics and rather than download it and put the data in that really sophisticated um, analysis program like SPSS you can toss it over into Microsoft Excel and run some really quick um, analysis to figure out what you found. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into a um, survey that is currently live, and I'm going to go into data and analysis, and I'm going to go um, into export data. Now, I wanna export it as an Excel document. I wanna talk a little bit about these two different options here. So I have a survey that is full of um, Likert type scales. Um, it's predominantly Likert type scales in my survey. And so those are gonna be um, on a range of one to five. Um, so for that type of a data, I would want to choose to do the used numeric values. However, I do have three, um, uh, demographic variables that are nominal level and so I I don't want to see the number representation of those variables and so I kind of need to also do use choice text so I'm actually going to download um, the same data set twice in two different ways I'm going to first download it in choice text and then I'm gonna really quickly go and download it in numeric values um, immediately so that I do have, I can, I can be assured that I do have the exact same data set because I'm gonna combine them so they need to be the same um, and that uh, I can then use um, the version of uh, the variables that I like for certain variables and then go over to the other spreadsheet and use the version um, of the variables that I like for that one. So I'm gonna start with use choice text I'm gonna download, and as soon as it's done downloading, I'm gonna go in and then now I'm gonna download again, but this time I'm going to use um, numeric values. And again, I'm going to Excel and use numeric values. So if you're gonna be doing this where you kind of wanna mix in together two separate um, versions of the same data set, you want one in numbers and one in words, then make sure that you're downloading them at the exact same time so that things are not out of order. All right, so if you're not really sure what I'm talking about with the, the numbers and, and the words and all of that, let me show you. So here I have a Likert type scale, but instead of being a one, it says none at all, right? Instead of being a three, it says a moderate amount, right? Instead of being a five, it says a great deal. So these are all words, and words are fine, words are great. Um, however, I wanna be able to create um, and involve one plus involve two plus involve three plus involve four plus involve five um, summative index to represent involve and I can't do that on words. I need them to be numbers. And this is really what the majority of my data set is, is gonna be all these different Likert scales, except for at the end, when I get to um, the three different demographic variables that um, are multiple choice items, and those are the ones that I am going to pull over from this version of, this, of the uh, data, into the other version of the data in the other spreadsheet. And here they are. It's uh, status, pay grade, and service. So column BG, column BH, and then uh, column BI. And before I move over to that data set, this is a little bit too roomy for me. Uh, these these uh, columns are way too um, far apart for me. So I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna um, shrink them a little bit so I don't have to do so much crazy scrolling. And I'm gonna make my column with 12. And now I can see that everything's a little bit closer together. Um, and now I can see what I wanna see on one screen rather than having to do so much scrolling. Okay, so here are uh, the words um, for the um, multiple choice nominal level variable that I want to end up um, putting over into my other data set. So let's look at that other data set. So I'm gonna go and open that other version. 
Now, this one is primarily made up of Likert scales, this, this survey. And so you can see, well, here, it's hard to see because this one's so roomy, too. So let me go ahead and do my column with changes here and make this a little bit more compact for you. Here we go. Um, so this is all numbers now, uh, including my BG, BH, BI columns. So instead of C saying active right here, it says one. And that's not very helpful for me when I want it to be the words, right? Um, but it is, it is really helpful for all of these um, things that are Likert scales to already be in the numbers. So um, I have more Likert scales then I have word type variables. So I'm gonna use this version, the one with the numbers as like my base, and then I'm going to copy over the version of these three variables, status, pay grade, and service, column BG, column BH, column BI, from the other version of the data, and I'm going to paste them into this data set and then I'm gonna have a nice uh, data set to start working with, all right? So before I start to do any pasting and everything, I wanna do some quality assurance checking just to make sure that I'm not gonna do anything wrong here. So I'm just gonna um, look at, let's just say line number 16. And I wanna make sure that line number 16 here is the same thing as line number 16 in the other data set. So notice I didn't, I haven't done any sorting. I just opened them up. They should, everything should be in the same order because they are the same data set. It's just that um, one is uh, representing numbers and the other is represented in words. And so I'm on line 16 here and I look at um, uh, demo one should be not very. So I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna look for demo one, and I'm gonna look for line 16. There I go, not very, excellent. And then I have marine, all right? So then I come over, I have service, marine, that was two, I remember that marine was two. And then um, I have a one for status. I look over here and I see line 16, and I have an active, I remember that active was one for status. Um, so I feel really good about these guys are all in the same order. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the words um, from, I'm going to take the whole column, right? Uh, B, G, B, H, B, I. And um, I have verified that everything is in the same order. I went to some random line of data and I confirmed that minus the fact that one is in numbers and one is in words, it is the same data. So I'm copying this to my clipboard, and then I'm going to go over to the same columns here, which is BG, BG BH, BI, and I'm gonna paste it over. There I go. Um, I did uh, change the size of my um, lines real quick, so I'm gonna come in here and uh, just format everything for my rows and make my, my row height. Um, I don't even know what a five looks like. Ooh, five is too small. We can't handle that. Let's do uh, 12. All right, 12 is, is pretty good. So I no longer need this data set because I only wanted those three variables and I'm done with it. So thank you, next. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. I don't even need to save that one. Um, and now here I am on the one that I'm cleaning. Um, so, uh, I am ready to start my real work here in cleaning. You, you probably thought that was cleaning my, my data set. Well, that was part of cleaning my data set. But now I have to go in and I have to figure out, hey, did anybody fill out this survey uh, or just go to like the front page and then not fill out any questions at all um, and then leave, right? Did anybody abandon my survey? So I see like this guy right here on line 73, he just kind of abandoned my survey. He came in and he looked at it and he was like, I don't wanna fill it out and he left. This guy right here um, on uh, line 87, same thing, uh, then just left. And then there's a whole chunk of them. So the best way to go about doing this is to do a sort. And I'm gonna sort on um, involve one, which is uh, my primary um, my first question that I really ask in my survey, 
Um, before I do that, I don't really need this uh, second um, line here. So I'm going to, I don't like to delete out too much. Um, I'm just gonna make a copy of this um, uh, spreadsheet and I'm going to call that first one uh, raw. Oops, I was writing over something, hold on. I'm gonna call this first one um, the raw data. And then I'm gonna come into um, this second one, which is a copy, and I'm gonna call this cleaned data. And this is gonna be where I do all my awesome work. All right, so I don't really need two headers. All I really want are the variable names um, because the variable names make the most sense to me. Um, you can delete out whichever one you want, it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm gonna delete out that, uh, that row um, for the, um, the secondary kind of like subhead kind of a thing. So here I am on column K it's the very first question that's asked in my survey, and I need to do a sort. So I have highlighted this here. I'm gonna go into, um, I'm in the Home tab. You can see right here, I'm in the Home tab. I'm going to go into Sort and Filter, and I'm gonna do a custom sort. Now, um, made a little noise, and it's like, hey, wait, 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 what do you wanna do? Um, I am going to make sure that I have selected Expand the Selection. When I have expand the selection selected, then it's going to take every single line of data and it's going to move all of the data on that line up or down, wherever it is it needs to go in the order that I want it to go based on my sort. If I didn't do that, it's, it, it would be as if, if I clicked on this one, just continue with the current selection, it would only sort column K but it would then take all of the information from column K out of its normal context of that entire line where one line equals all of that respondent's answers. And so imagine if you're standing in line for a concert and then um, they say, oh, we have to resort the line. Everybody has to get into a different order for the line. And as they resort the line, you end up uh, getting um, separated from your shoes and your socks and your jacket. Now that shouldn't happen. When you resort the line, everything that you were wearing should go with you. And that's the same thing that needs to happen here. All of the data that um, belongs to this, this row um, needs to go with them. And so make sure you have expand the selection. I'm gonna go ahead and say sort. I'm gonna sort on this guy right here. And then I am going to um, say smallest to largest. Yep, that's great. And I'm gonna sort on it. Now, as I am doing the um, review of my data, I need to really uh, go down to the bottom and look for all of these people that um, started to fill it out and then just decided for whatever reason that they did not want to fill it out. So um, I see that I have a couple of folks right down here at the bottom and I'm going to delete them out. Now that's fine that they're gone, no harm, no foul. There may be other variables that you need to clean um, and so you just need to be aware of what you need to clean. Like let's say you asked how old someone was and um, they wrote in crazy things. Um, you know, we allowed people to write in, you know, their own numbers in here. If we wanted to clean up 1.1 to 2 and turn it into 1.5, we could do that. I'm not going to waste my time and, and do that right now, though. So um, I'm going to say that this is clean. I have deleted out um, the people who have not filled out the survey, and I'm ready to go to actually start to create a um, index. So now an index is, I'm gonna um, zoom in just a little bit here. An index basically takes um, your questions that all go together. And I see that I have five questions here that talk about involvement. And I am going to basically add up involve one plus involve two plus involve three plus involve four plus involve five. And so that's then gonna create one big honk and score for involvement. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to insert a brand new column. I'll just go ahead and do it on the front. 
I'm gonna turn it a color so I can find it in my data set really easily. I'm gonna give it a name, just involve, no number after it. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna tell you, I'm old school, so I'm gonna do it the old school way. But uh, if I were to add up all five of these and then divide it by the number of items that there are, there are five items, that is the exact same thing as if I were to do an average. So I'm gonna do it the old school way. If you wanna do an average, you can, but I'm gonna do a sum and then I'm gonna do it divided by. So let's do equals, oops, is that in the right place? Let's see. I'll just type it in, in the uh, bar up here instead. Equals, sum, all right, I can grab it. I can go ahead and pull, I wanna sum these five. Excellent. And then after that, I want to divide by the total number of questions that there are. There are five. And oh my gosh, my formula didn't work. Don't freak out. It just means that your um, column is not set up in the right way. So if, uh, it's not set up to have a um, formula in it. So if I go into format cells and I try general, let's see if that works when I come in here and try it again. Now it worked, okay? So now I have a five in here. Um, I am doing the sum divided by five and I can see that um, if I have ones all the way across the board, then it makes sense that my average answer to involve is gonna be a one. Great, now you can see when I click on this that there's this little bit of a um, green dot at the bottom, um, and that is going to allow me to pull down the formula. I'm only gonna pull it down a little bit just to make sure it works okay. Um, so this one was sum L2 to P2 divided by five, so then this next one should be sum L3 to P3 divided by five because I went from row two to row three. So let me go down, yep, that worked, and then it should be four, five, six. So before I do anything and apply it in mass, um, I'm always gonna work in some kind of a quality assurance check just to make sure that everything is working like it should. So I'm gonna drag this all the way down and get it to my 220 something people. Very close. Let's see if I overshoot it, I do. Boom, there I go. So now I can see people who have a high involvement, like this person right here has like fours and fives, amazing. And then I can also see people who have a low involvement. Uh, like this person right here who has mostly ones, all right? So um, that gives me an idea of um, the overall level of involvement without having to look at five different individual um, scores. And so I've used a scale that has already been proven to be reliable and to be valid, and now um, I can um, have faith that I can sum all those five items into one variable, and then that's what I can use for my analysis. All right, so let's do some analysis. So I have at the end, those uh, words that I popped in are um, things like, uh, you know, what service someone is in or whether they're active duty or, um, you know, what different type of um, uh, history they have with the military for their military service. So I'm gonna, I'm interested to see if there's a difference based on, or a difference in involvement based on status. And so I'm gonna set up a um, pivot table to look at that. If I just click on this little, uh, this little um, kind of dog ear um, bent over uh, triangle here in the corner, it's gonna highlight everything on my spreadsheet. Awesome. I'm gonna go into insert and to the insert tab. I'm gonna go into pivot table. Um, I have not made any pivot tables yet, so I'm gonna do a new worksheet. If I had already made a pivot table, um, I would probably put all my pivot tables in the same worksheet because I don't wanna have 50 million worksheets. I can't handle that. Um, 
So now I have to figure out what I'm going to put in here. I'm going to put in uh, service. I'm sorry, not service. Status is going to be down in the rows. Look, there they are. Fantastic. And then I'm going to look for involve. And I want to put the mean score for involve in the values. Now it has automatically done a count. And I don't want the count, right? I don't want to know how many uh, people, you know, had a score for that. So if I click on the I next to it, I can change it from the count and I could change it into something else. I could do the average, which is exactly what I want to do right here. So I'm going to show the average of involve. Excellent. Um, I'm going to click over here. I'm going to, I'm going to go into my pivot table and um, I'm going to click uh, next to um, my little uh, pivot table right here, this little down arrow. Um, and I am going to turn off anything that's a, an empty cell. I'm going to turn off anything that is blank. Um, and I feel pretty good about that. Um, let's go ahead and close it. Um, I feel like there's a little bit too much happening right here with uh, the amount of um, decimals that I have. So I'm just going to go back to the Home tab and I'm going to decrease the number of decimals. I'm going to go just to what um, uh, American Psych Psychological Association likes, which is APA, and I'm going to go uh, down to two decimals. I'm going to do it for the grand total, too. This is everybody who's in here. Um, and now I can answer the question as to who has the most involvement of all this group. And I can see that the most involvement comes from the people who are retired. Now, if you're wondering what involvement was, involvement was involvement with the history of the type of work that these people did. And so it makes sense that, hey, retired people, um, would be very involved with the history uh, because they have spent their whole career working in that particular field. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so this is just a very simple way to show you, A, how to download your data out of Qualtrics, how to deal with the fact that sometimes you have um, Likert and numeric data and sometimes you have nominal data, that is words, um, how to clean your data and to make sure that you take out the cases um, of the people who just basically looked at your survey and then left. You don't need them, get rid of them. How to create an index um, so that you are grouping together variables that go together. Um, and that's the whole reason why we used a scale in the first place. And then now I have compared um, two variables where I have looked at that index that I created um, cut in um, four different ways or five different ways um, looking at it by status. Um, so I now have two variables on one pivot table and that is your um, ticket to awesomeness. So happy researching and enjoy all your analysis.